Welcome to Python Advanced 2, Templates. In this video we'll be looking at templating, what it is, how to use it, and why to use it. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. Ok, so what is a template? Well a template is just like it sounds, it's a formatted layout that you fill in with important things. The Python template module is part of the string module, as it uses a string to define the template. The template's key feature is that it allows data to change without having to edit the application every time. Ok, so how does it work? Well, the template cast class takes a string as a template. Within the string, we use placeholder variable names with a preceding dollar sign to, de to, de to depict that it's a placeholder. We can then substitute values into the template with the substitute method using, the di using a dictionary, where the keys in the dictionary match the placeholder variable names. The return string is the template with all the values rather than the placeholders. It should also be noted that a placeholder variable name should follow the same naming conventions as Python. Ok, so let's make something now. We will make a simple output program that will output info about the user's cart. We will use a template to format the output and fill it in with our cart's info. So let's create a file called cart.py. Okay, so vim cart, oops, cart.py. Ok. So we're going to need the template module, so from string import template. Ok, now we'll create our main function, so def main, and we'll create our cart list, so that'll hold all the information about our cart. Now this information could come from a database or from a file or anything like that, but for now we'll just hard code it so that we can do this quickly. Ok, so cart append and we're going to put a dictionary in there, so dict and we'll use the keyword item to, just, to, do, um, to depict the name of the item, so we'll go coke as one of the item names and we'll use the key price for the total price for that item in the card. So we'll do eight dollars and we'll use quantity for the qu quantity of the item. So the quantity of two is I don't know, four dollars a throw a bottle of coke, two of them, it's eight dollars. Okay. Card dot append dict, open that, and our item, let's make it cake, and the price of one cake, we'll make it $12, and the quantity, make it one. And we'll add one last item, so cart, append, and dictionary of item, make it equal fish. Ok, so fish, and we'll make the total price for the fish 32, and the quantity was 4. Ok, so now that we've got our cart, we just have to work on our output. So we'll create a template, so we'll object t equals a template, and our template will be dollar sign $QTY quantity. And x and the item name and whoop, item and then we'll make that equal the price so dollar price. Okay, so our template's done. So those values will be replaced by our uh, values in our cart. Um, we'll create a temporary variable called total, which will keep total of all of the prices. And to make it nice, we'll print cart so that we know it's a cart. Oop, that needs to be a lowercase p. Oops. Okay, so for the data in our cart, we are going to print t dot subst substitute. And we're going to substitute the data values into our template and then print it out. And we'll add to our total, so our total plus equals our data 
open square brackets and our price keyword so open quotes price and that will add the price onto our total okay now let's print out our total after we've we'll put it in quotes total plus string of total so we know what the total cost is going to be okay so that's our main written we'll just write our uh, if name so if name equal to main then we are going to run main okay so let's save this hopefully it works so python cart dot py and we get our cart is two times coke which equals eight one times cake is 12, four times fish equals 32, and our total is 52. Okay, so that worked, cool. Now if we uh, come back to our slideshow. Okay, so errors are possible in templates, but mostly they occur while you're programming them. So for debugging purposes, here are a few common ones. The no placeholder match, which will give a key error. This is usually because there was no key and the value in the dictionary to match match the placeholder. And there's also the bad placeholder error, which will give a value error. This is usually a, the placeholder starting with an invalid character or it's not being existent. So it's usually there's a number at the start of your placeholder variable. Okay. So we can have the template handle these problems by using the safe substitute method of the template class. This will return a string no matter what. However, any resolved, unresolved keys and braces will result in a yeah, will be in the resulting string. As we can see in this example, the template dollar name had dollar money is only given the value for the name. So we get the output Jim had dollar money rather than the proper than a proper output. So though it handles these errors, it should only be used where the error may occur out of your control. Otherwise it's considered sloppy coding and may leave unused and dangling keys in your template, which may cause errors later down the track. Okay, it's also possible for us to create a custom delimiter by using a subclass and overriding the default in the template class. This is great when the user may be creating the template from the command line. So let's edit our current program to use the hash symbol rather than the dollar sign. Okay, so we'll come back, open up our program again, and this time we're going to be overriding the template class. So we'll create a subclass, so class, and we'll call it my template. And that'll take a template as the base class, and we're going to override the delimiter variables. So delimiter equals and it's the char the hash symbol okay so now now that we've changed the delimiter we're going to need to change our template so we're going to use my template instead of template and instead of using dollar signs we we'll use our hash symbol that we set up okay so we got hash quantity x hash item equals hash price and this will substitute our values in but we're using the hash delimiter this time okay so let's save this and run it we should get the same output if everything worked correctly and there we go so you don't have to use the dollar sign but you know it's the default so if you're going to be using something that the user may be creating a template hashtags are pretty common these days or even using the percent sign is pretty common okay so now that we looked at how uh, to use a template let's cover why should we use one the main reason for me is that it saves time and reduces the size of my code files but it's also good for allowing the user to create templates for example a program that renames all of the image files in a directory with the rename style that they construct. As seen here, 
we would rename all of the photos with the name my photo underscore the file number plus the images format. Templates are also extremely useful for web pages because usually a web page will look the same but contain different data. This works great with the CGI programming in Python, but more on that in a later tutorial. Some things to note about templates is that you can escape the delimiter if needed by using two consecutive delimiters. For example, template you owe me uh, $0 will use the dollar sign as the character rather than a placeholder. We can also use custom regular expressions on templates when we create a subclass and override the ID pattern variable. By default, it's set to accept underscores and alphanumeric characters. We can also use curly braces to ident identify which part of the delimiter is the placeholder variable name. In this example, I have the template, the place yard is far away, where the yard is appended to the result of the placeholder. So if we use the value ship, the output would be, the shipyard is far away, but this could be replaced with farm or a number of other places. I hope you now have a better understanding of what templates are and how they work, and when to use them. Of course, they won't always be practical, but sometimes they can be a lifesaver. Next we're going to co cover OptPass. Thanks for watching.